and now for something completely different, restoring a Bing clockwork train. And this is part one, initial examination of the mechanical parts of the engine. I've removed the clockwork mechanism which includes the wheels from the main body of the locomotive. And here it is. This is the main mechanism and it's currently sat in this plastic bowl full of white spirit, because it was very dirty indeed. And in this clip I'm using my toothbrush to get into the more difficult parts. I didn't use cellulose thinners for this job, as I only want to remove the grime and the old oil, not the paint. After 12 hours in the bowl of white spirit, it's time to remove the mechanism and look at it in detail on the bench. In this clip, I'm attempting to pour the white spirit using a funnel back into the bottle, but quite a lot's going on the bench, that's why I have a cloth underneath it. This white spirit is no longer white, well it was never white in the first place, but it's not very clear. You can see by the colour of it and the residue in the bottom of the tub how much dirt's in there. I didn't pour all the dirt back into the bottle, I left that in the tub. The good thing about spilling the white spirit all over the bench is now I have an excuse to clean the bench. The white melamine base that I fitted to the bench is quite good for the video as it makes things show up, but it's not very practical for a workbench. But for the time being the workbench is looking quite clean. And here is the mechanism. This is an extremely clever piece of mechanical engineering. The more I look at it, the more impressed I am with it. I haven't got a suitable key to wind the mechanism up, so I'm using my small back or spanner, being very careful not to damage any of the winding mechanism. I've actually bought a key from the auction site that we all know and love, and it should be with me next week. I've referred to this short series as the restoration of a clockwork train. And before any meticulous viewers take the trouble to write in just to tell me that a locomotive is not a train, I am aware of that, but the series is going to be about the renovation of the train, which includes two carriages. This unit is very old indeed. I had a look online to see what it was, and I only managed to find one instance of this online. This locomotive has an 040 wheel arrangement, no wheels at the front, four in the middle, and no wheels at the back. And also, this is gauge 3, which I believe is 2.5 inch gauge, not O gauge. I'm currently winding the mechanism a little bit further using my backhoe spanner. Because of the age of this mechanism, I'm being very careful. So here are the controls. This lever at the back stops the cogs from turning, so it's the brake. This lever is the forward and reverse mechanism. For some reason, this mechanism is quite difficult to get hold of. I'll try and demonstrate the forward and reverse just using one hand. The wheel may be wobbly, but the forward and reverse mechanism is very smooth. These are the connecting rods and the coupling rods. And as you can see from this clip, they're not in very good condition at all. The first thing that I'm going to do is take them apart completely and attempt to straighten them using a soft hammer. This soft hammer, in fact. So here are the parts separated. I'm going to be very careful not to lose the bolts and washers. I'm going to put them in the tender, then I know where they are. In this clip, I've straightened the rods and I'm cleaning them up on a piece of wet or dry sandpaper, but I'm not rubbing them very hard because they're plated. And I don't want to remove any of this plating. They're actually made of brass. I'm just using the wet or dry paper to remove any corrosion on the rods. I have some aluminium wheel paint, and it's not silver, it's just about the same colour as the plating. So I'll use that to just tidy up the rods once they're finally cleaned. For the moment, the coupling rods and the connecting rods can go into the tender with the other parts. I found an easier way of winding up the engine, so here I'm winding it up a bit further. Although it gets harder to wind as you increase the pressure on the spring, so here, once again, I'm reverting back to my Barco spanner. I don't want to mark this mechanism any more than it's marked already. It's surprisingly powerful. I really wouldn't want to get my fingers in the mechanism. In the centre of the mechanism is some sort of a centrifugal system, which I assume is a governor, and this top part that moves is the speed selector. Believe it or not, this has a two-speed gearbox. And in this clip, I will demonstrate the functionality of the two-speed gearbox. With the lever at the top of the slot, that's the slow speed, and now it's at the bottom of the slot, this is the high speed. The wheel at this side is OK. The wheel at the other side has sustained some impact damage at some time in its life. That's why it's not running true. 
Now that the white spirit has evaporated, it's time for some oil. This is my normal oil mixture that I use for general purpose lubrication. And the mixture is 50% steam oil, 25% machine oil and 25% rapeseed oil or canola oil that you buy at the supermarket. I use the rapeseed oil as an anti-friction additive and it seems to work quite well. There are plenty of points to oil on this engine and they haven't been oiled for many years I would think. According to the one instance that I found online, this Gage 3 engine dates from around 1910. The only tin plate stuff that I've looked at in the past has been the Hornby tin plate stuff in O-Gage. This unit seems to be much more heavy duty than the Hornby stuff. So how did I stop the wheel being wobbly? Well, it was remarkably simple. No ultraviolence or any impact was used. I removed the crank web, and then I removed the wheel and swapped it for one of the front ones. Not really a good fix, I know, but this is far too old for me to start bashing the wheel about to straighten it. At least it doesn't suffer from the same problem as the Hornby stuff. With the Hornby tin plate toys, a lot of the wheels, as they got older, fractured because the metal was not very good. But apart from one being a bit bent, these wheels are fine. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.